guys, I'm John. And I'm Juanita. And you are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to his Club TV. Hello there, you are welcome to His Cup TV. Um, yes, so before we begin with whatever that we are supposed to do today, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel uh, if you have not done so. Please, this is a channel that is focused on the teaching of history, CRS, government, as well as um, social studies very soon, and then we will add more subjects as well. We are basically interested in teaching most about 90% of the topics in um, WASI. Uh, senior high school based on the YC or YX level, uh, based on the YX level. So please kindly do us the honor to subscribe to get more interesting videos um, as we move on. If you have all, I mean, already subscribed to, um, we thank you very much for your support as well. Um, so in our previous lesson, we looked at the people in of Ghana, and um, we we basically introduced ourselves to the 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 people that live in Ghana and all the ethnic groups uh, that live in present-day Ghana. And we said that some of these ethnic groups were the, the Akan, the Moli Dabwani, the Guan, the, uh, you know, the Gunja, and, 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 and other, other people that live in the country. We couldn't complete or finish that lesson. And so today, we are going to focus on a zone, a region, a part of Ghana. And then we will look at the people that live in that area. And that part that we are going to focus on today is going to be the northern part. So we're going to look at the northern part of Ghana and learn about the people that live in the northern part of Ghana. And this is a topic for Form 2 SHS uh, history class. So let's, we, 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 we will look at the characteristics. Okay? We, we will look at the characteristics of the indigenous people that live in the northern part of Ghana. And that's basically what we will look at. Okay, so let's begin with our lesson objectives. Um, so in our previous lesson, we looked at this one. So we were able to achieve uh, this objectives, right? We were able to achieve this objective. So this is out. So today we are going to focus on the uh, indigenous people of northern Ghana. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the indigenous people of northern Ghana. And then also highlight the characteristics of these indigenous people that are found in northern Ghana today. The characteristics of these indigenous people found in northern Ghana today. So our lesson today is going to, be, is going to focus on the indigenous people of Ghana. So we did this in our last lesson. And if you, in case you miss it, you go in there and watch. I'll add a link in the description as well. So um, this is the northern part of Ghana. We are focusing on the northern region of, of Ghana. So this map here shows or uh, depicts the northern part of Ghana. Uh, we have the Gunja um, ethnic group over here. We have the Moli Dagwani ethnic group over there. Um, we have the Wala, the Dagati, we have the Sisala, you know, Frafra, the Talensi, the Guan also as well over there. So let's come in there and look at something. Um, the northern zone includes the area covered by present-day northeast savannah, upper west, uh, upper east, as well as the Uti regions of Ghana. And so today, if, today when you look at the, the map of Ghana, um, these areas or these um, regions um, constitute what we are looking at or what we termed as the northern part of Ghana. You remember quite recently the president redemarcated the um, um, the regions, and so these new ones are what um, constitute the northern Ghana today. Okay, so we have, uh, our focus is going to be on the people that lived in that area. Now, the main group which occupy this area were the indigenous inhabitants made up of the Vagala, the Sisala, the Tapulisi, as well as the Guan. So, look at them here. We have the Guan here, we have the Sisala over here. We have the Vagala. Do we have the Vagala there? Uh, their name is not there, but they were located there. Do we have the Tampolinsi there? Uh, we don't have the Tampolinsi, but they were also located there in the Guan. So what we are saying is that if you can recall in our previous video or lesson, we said that all the major ethnic groups that live in Ghana today, most of them were not indigenous from 
Ghana, which means that they migrated from elsewhere to settle in Ghana. And we saw that uh, most of their oral tradition really attest to that. However, the question is, when those people who uh, migrated from elsewhere to settle in Ghana, did they come to meet indigenous people, aborigines, people who already were settling on the land? The answer is yes. So, for instance, in the northern part of the country, um, Ghana, um, the indigenous people, people who lived on the land before the Gunjas and the Moli Dagwanis people invaded, were these people, the Vagala people, the Sisala people, the Tampulinsi, as well as the Guan. Today, we might not hear of this group of people or these tribes very much because they are in the minority. However, these people were the indigenous inhabitants of the northern part of the country, Ghana. So when you are asked to mention the indigenous inhabitants, in people who were indigenous in the northern part, and you write Gonja, the, the Mampusi or the Dagomba people, I'm sorry, they are going to mark you wrong. The indigenous people that lived in this area, where the Vagala, the Sisala, the Tampulinsi, as well as the Guan, the Moli Dagbani and the Gunja, they only came to conquer these already occupied people. So the land actually belonged to these indigenous tribes, which today we don't hear much about them because they have been overshadowed by their conqueror. So the Gunja, the Moli Dagbani people were all immigrants who migrated from elsewhere to conquer the lands that belong to these indigenous tribes. Do you understand? So be very careful about um, this because they can try and, you know, and trick you by making you, you know, uh, write this uh, uh, Moli Dagbani stuff. So later, when we read the history, the oral tradition concerning the origin of these Moli Dagbani and Gunja, you will come to realize that they were not indigenous. They moved elsewhere to settle here. Now, others were the Konkumba, the Nafeba, the Chamba, who also live in the eastern water. So these people were also indigenous. The Konkumba, um, the Nafaba, as well as the Chamba people, they were also found over here. So all these people were the indigenous people, the owners of the land, the people who the Moli Dagwani and the Gunjas came to meet. They were the first people to settle on the land in the northern part of Ghana. So they are known as the indigenous of the northern part of Ghana. So don't forget that. With the exception of the Guan, all these ethnic groups spoke languages which were very much the same. Um, they also had the same culture, um, producing the same kind of things, living in the same kind of way. And so interestingly, all this group of people, with the exception of the Guan, who spoke a, a different um, language, all of them, the Konkumba, the Nafaba, the Chamba, all of them spoke eventually the same language. They could understand each other. They had the same culture. They, they lived in the same kind of way. Okay? And we are looking at the indigenous people. Don't forget that. We are not looking at the era of the Gonja and the Moli Dagwan. We are looking at the era of the indigenous people. These indigenous people are the ones that we are focusing on. And we are saying that they lived in the same kind of way. They had the same culture. This is some of these indigenous people. Look at them, or these people who live in the northern part of Ghana. They, 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 always, they, they, they almost have the same culture. Everything about them is almost the same. Everything is, is the same. All right? Good. Now, the other groups believed to be invaders from around the Lake Chal area were the Moli Dagwani, the, the Gunja, who came from the Mandilan. So you see, over here, you can find the Moli Dagwani, the Gunjas as well over here. But we are saying that these two ethnic groups were not indigenous. They migrated from elsewhere to invade these um, Vakala, Sisala, the Tampulinsi group of people. And then they ruled them and controlled them. And now these indigenous tribes are now in the minority. Uh, so that is what you should know about the northern part of Ghana. And like I said, be very careful when you are asked to um, um, name the et indigenous ethnic groups that lived in Ghana. It's different from name any four ethnic groups that live in Ghana. There are two different um, questions with two different answers. All right, good. So with that said, let's go in there 
and look at the characteristics of these indigenous or early settlers who settled in northern part of Ghana. That is the Vagala, the Sisala, the Tampulensi, uh, the, the Konkumba, the Chamba. What were some of the, the peculiar things that could be found in them? For example, if I asked you to tell me the characteristics of Ama and Akosia, you can tell me that Ama and Akosia, they, uh, they all have, say, breasts. You understand? Because that is a peculiar characteristic between them. Okay? Yes. So let's look at the characteristics that can be found among these indigenous ethnic um, tribes who were invaded by the Mande people, uh, from, by the Mande people from the Mande and, and the Lake Chad area. Good. So we earlier on said that all these indigenous tribes spoke the same language with the exception of the, of the Guan who spoke a different kind of language. All of them spoke very much the same language and belonged to the same culture. They also lived in the same kind of way. So their way of life, their culture, everything was almost the same. Do you understand? So a Vagala man could understand what a Konkumba man was saying. Their system of marriage, I mean their worship, I mean the food they eat, the dresses they wear were almost the same um, as to each other. Okay, so it, it will be hard for you to even identify a Kunkumba man from a Vagalama. All right? Good. Now, another important um, characteristic about these states were that they were stateless or acephalous. Stateless means that these indigenous people did not have states or kingdoms and central administration okay, to make laws and enforce them. The early settlers essentially lived in loose social what unity, lose social unity. And this accounted for the reason why they were conquered by the by their invaders, the Mal the the Gunja and the um uh, the the Moli Dagwani people. They were stateless in the form in the sense that they did not come together to form a state to have a central administration, to have a I mean a central government being it a king to rule over them also. So they were just stateless, as if follows. They had just, so the Kunkumba were just two families who come, they'll settle here. They are on their own. They have their lands, which was taken over by the Tindana, of course, or the head of the family. Another group will come and settle. Nobody controls them. They have their own rule, peculiar to themselves as a family. So they were stateless. So in times of war, <laughs> There was nobody to defend who. Who was going to defend who? They all had to run away for their life because they did not even have a king. So that is what we mean by stateless society or acephalous society. All these early states, we are talking about the indigenous people because those who invaded these indigenous people had states. They had kings. They brought about kingship and political organization to these people. But then the original people, the Vakala, the Sisala, they were stateless. They had no states. Okay? Yes. And all of them, this is a peculiar thing that ran through all of them. Okay? Now, they also had a family system, a similar, a similar um, family system. The early settlers had social units or family system that was made up of the dead, um, the living, and as well as the yet unborn. And this is what I love about African families. It includes the dead the living and the even the yet unborn people. And each um, family unit had a recognized head who was usually the oldest male member. Um, and then he had the power to make laws and enforce them. And then also uh, enforce them, arrested with the head of each of the family. Um, each family head was also a chief in his own right. So like I said, they had a common sense of family. They all believed that a family consisted of both the dead, the living, and the yet unborn children. So each family that settled had a, a family head who made uh, uh, rules and enforced them in his own right. Okay, and so this characteristics was um, familiar, ran through all the indigenous ethnic groups that we know of in the northern part of the country. Good. So let's move on to more of the 
of the characteristics of the indigenous people. Now, all these indigenous people, one char another characteristic was that they also had what was known as the Tindana. Okay, uh, each of these ethnic groups had an official with the highest authority. Each of them, and the Tindana was the one with the highest authority. So, if we were to bring it into a proper political system, we would say that the Tindana was more like a chief. He had almost a power like a chief. He was the highest authority among each of these states. Now, the, this of officials was known as the Tindana or the owner of the land. So the meaning of Tindana means owner of the land. Indeed, the Tindana never owned the land. He was only a custodian. In as much as we say that he owned the land, um, we, he did not own land in that sense, but he was what a custodian um, of the land in the sense that he is there to take care of the land for the people. So the people have entrusted the lands into his hands for him to, uh, to take care of. But the land has not belonged to him, uh, you know, in that sense, you understand? Yes, so that is what we mean by that. He derived his power and authority from the moral influence he commanded among his people. All lands inhabited by the people were divided into a well-defined area called Tijani or Tigani, Tingani, and it was headed by the Tindana. So the lands, allocation of lands to the various states or, or, or family members, the lands were, def were defined or allocated I mean, the lands allocated were known as the Tigani, and it was headed by the Tindana. The Tindana led his people during annual festivals. He also prayed on behalf of his people in times of danger or disaster. He received the hind legs of animals killed by hunters. So that was a tax. So really, when you assess this um, political, so-called political system, you are likely to think that the Tindana was almost like the chief, because the Tindana was actually receiving, um, um, what do you call it, tax in a form of, you know, you know in kind, hind legs of animals that were killed by these hunters were given to the Tindana because it was seen that they owned the land. They were the custodian of the land. So when you kill an animal, you should give them something. And that re echo or reminds me of how even the Asantis, uh, you know, um, um, perceived their chief. The chief in the Asante Empire also performs almost the same function as the Tindana, all right? And so it's almost like the Tindana was the king, but not the king or chief in that sense. Do you get it? Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. I think that will be the last or maybe the last but one. They also had a, a, a similar um, religious system, all right? And a um, similar religious, a religious system in the sense that all these a group of people who inhabited the northern part of Ghana, the indigenous people, they all practiced a polytheism whereby they worshipped more than one god. Um, they had more than one god. They believed in the existence of several gods. The various gods of the communities were served by the priests and the priestesses. Okay, and so they believed that all these gods had separate responsibility, um, separate functions. If you wanted a baby, they had a god that you go to. If you wanted rain, there was a god to pray to. So they worshipped several gods. And this was a peculiar feature or characteristics among all the ethnic groups, the indigenous ethnic groups that live in northern Ghana. The next one was that they also had a similar system of inheritance. Okay, and this and, and the system of inheritance of the early settlers. We are talking about the early settlers, those who settled in the indigenous part of the northern part of Ghana, was matrilinear, which then means that they inherited from the mother line. Interestingly, mm -hmm. so if your father owned something, if your father owned a land and he died, the system of inheritance was in such a way that the son could not inherit the father's property or a daughter could not inherit the father's property. However, your father's sister's children are what are going to inherit the properties. So, so yes, your father's sister's children are what are going to, are, are, who, I mean, they are the ones who are going to inherit your father's property. You get a point, yes. So you will also inherit the property of somebody else's father. That is the matrilineal system. This implies that they inherited through the lineage of 
the mothers, of course, through the mothers from lineage. That is what I have talked about. Fantastic. Um, I think we've had a very nice and interesting discussions today. This is an update question that came. List any three indigenous people of northern Ghana. So you see, now in this question, when you write Moli Dagbani and Gunja, it is wrong because of this word, indigenous people. Because of this indigenous people, when you write the Moli Dagbani, the Dagbani, it makes it wrong. So if you take this indigenous people away, okay, and then it becomes list any three people of northern Ghana, then you can add the Moli Dagbani because they have not been specific. And that is what I was warning you about in the course of our discussion. Again, it highlights the characteristics of the indigenous people of northern Ghana. Good, try your hand on them.